my god, Tanner. Did you see the feed? What's up, guys? Razzin on here. I apologize that I've been away. I got a really bad stomach flu that just totally wiped me out. And also, I launched a new Call of Duty podcast with my good friend Tanner called The Drop Shot. You can find the full episodes here on YouTube. I created their own playlist for them. But I've also uploaded the audio version to wherever you listen to podcasts. iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, whatever. It's there. Just search for The Drop Shot. We go over news, recent patches, upcoming patches, our analysis on those things, and then a little bit of banter and messing around and talking about what we're doing in Call of Duty, in real life, etc. And the podcast is recorded live on my stream. You can find that at twitch.tv slash Razanon. I've dropped a link in the description. It would mean a lot to me if you guys could just give me a follow. It's a lot of fun live. We do a lot of chat interaction and I would love to see you guys there. Today's video is a lot different. I'm actually going to be going over five tips that you can use in game that are gonna make you do a lot better if you can internalize these things. These aren't class setups. They're not attachments. They're not perks. So this isn't stuff that will better prepare you to do well, which is what most of my videos focus on. And if you watched my nuke breakdown, that's pretty much all that video was focused on. It was a lot less tactical and a lot more strategic. How do I set up a class? What gun do I use? What perks do I use? But today's video is going to be things that no matter what weapon, no matter what class, no matter what map you're on, no matter how you've prepared, these are things you should be doing pretty much all the time that are going to substantially raise your KD if you can get in the habit of always doing them. And this is going to be a lot different than other tips and tricks videos you've probably seen on YouTube because I don't see this stuff talked about pretty much anywhere. But even though they're not talked about that often, that doesn't mean they aren't extremely important. And it doesn't mean that if you can internalize all these, you won't do much better because the reality is you absolutely will. Some of these things I've learned myself through playing a lot. And then other things I've seen from watching really, really good players in public matches consistently do. And I only see the absolute best players doing all of these things. So I can virtually guarantee that if you're watching this video, you're not doing all of this stuff. You, I'm going to highlight some examples of all of this stuff. Some of it will be my gameplay. Some of it will be better players than me gameplay. Without further ado, let's get into it. So this first one is something that I struggle with a lot. And I've seen literally no one else in the game do this regularly and effectively, except for Nate Gibson. Nate Gibson is an insane Call of Duty Modern Warfare player. He plays multiplayer all the time. He's been streaming and making YouTube videos for years, and he's one of the most ridiculously good players I've ever seen. And this tip is to not be afraid of picking up weapons. If you're like the average Call of Duty player, more than that, if you're like 90% of Call of Duty players, a lot of your deaths come from reloading, being low on ammo, reloading at the wrong time, not reloading and then dying because your clip is empty. Nate Gibson has perfected the art of picking up guns to continue fragging. So he'll dump half of an M4 clip into one guy, half into another guy, and then he sees three more people coming. Instead of reloading or switching to his handgun, he's going to pick up whatever weapons on the ground and keep shooting with that. The odds are when you pick up a weapon, it's going to have enough ammo in it to at least get you one kill. Most people are dropping primary weapons because that's what they die with. And most people have more ammo than you do when you want to pick up that weapon. So don't be afraid when you kill one person or two people and you see another guy coming or you know another guy is there. Instead of trying to find cover and reload and die doing that, or taking the time to switch to your secondary weapon, it is often much faster, more efficient, and way better to just immediately pick up whatever weapons on the ground and continue the engagement with that. This clip is an example of how well this can work. I actually laughed out loud when I saw this. I was live on stream when this happened. 
Just take a look at how insane this is. Dude, they're behind us. What is that stutter? Okay. I've mentioned this guy before. He's so gross and super fun to watch. I strongly encourage you to follow him on Twitch and subscribe to him on YouTube. Links to that are in the description as well as on my own channel page in the right hand pane, Nate Gibson. Go sub to him. So I strongly encourage you guys to try and make this a habit for yourselves, just like I'm doing. It will help you, trust me. In the same vein, this next tip is to switch weapons instead of reloading. You should really only try and reload when you know that no one is around or you're fairly certain that no one is around. Reloading should be your absolute last resort when you're actually in a gunfight or if you turn around a corner and you know someone's chasing you, you probably don't have time to reload. But sometimes you can't pick up a weapon. There's nothing on the ground for you. You're out of ammo on your primary. Switch to your secondary instead of trying to reload. Our primary weapons are better weapons than our secondaries, obviously. We're way more comfortable with them. They're fully automatic. So a lot of the average player's instinct, if they're in a gunfight and they get behind cover and they happen to be safe, is to try and sneak in a reload so that they'll have their primary ready again when that person pushes you or that next engagement starts. But most of the time, you're not gonna have time to reload. Even if you're able to run around a corner or he's able to run around a corner and you know the guy is there, but he's not able to shoot you right now, resist the temptation to reload. A million things can happen in the next half a second and the vast majority of the time, you're just not gonna have time to reload. And your chances of getting that kill when you switch to your secondary as opposed to trying to reload and then get the kill with your primary are much higher than you'd think. And that's one of the reasons why you see so many good players use their pistols a lot and get comfortable with those pistols. And if you start doing this a lot more, you might be fumbling a lot of kills for a while, but eventually you'll get comfortable with that pistol. And then you're gonna turn the corner to where this strategy becomes much more successful than trying to reload in a sketchy situation is. Here's an example of my favorite streamer, another Call of Duty demon on the keys, the Mad Marsupial, the aimbot from the Outback, none other than Syrian himself. He's another insane Call of Duty PC player. He streams on Twitch. He has a YouTube channel. Check them both out and watch this clip. This is certainly easier to get used to than picking up a weapon instead of reloading is, but it's still outside the comfort zone of the average player. Again, because pistols are hard to get kills with. They're much harder than an automatic weapon. But I promise you that if you stick to it, you'll get comfortable enough with that pistol to where this strategy is going to work for you. This next tip is also related to reloading. And this might seem silly, but a lot more of your deaths than you probably think are in some way related to ammo conservation, reloading at the wrong times, or not reloading when you should have. And this next tip is related to that. This is to prone while you reload. There are situations in which you don't want to drop your whole body to reload, but I would say more often than not, it makes sense to prone while you reload, especially when you have your whole team behind you, you've got some cover in front of you, and then you've got enemies in front of you, which is typically how the orientation of the players on the map is going to be. You might be in the habit right now of maybe running behind cover to reload, getting into a corner to reload, or maybe even crouching to reload. Those are all good, but often proning out is better. Running to a corner to reload takes more time, and you want to have ammo in your gun as soon as possible in the event that someone runs up to you and starts an engagement. And if you're able to prone right where you are, you already know where everyone is 
and it's possible that if you run to some corner to reload that you think is safe someone else has an angle on you that you didn't know was there and now you're standing in a corner with no ammo in your gun and you're gonna die so oftentimes it's best to stay right where you are prone and reload right there and as i mentioned crouching while you reload behind cover is definitely good but there will sometimes be pieces of cover where you crouch and you think you're fully behind it but your head is peeking up from the top and you can die that way so in a lot of cases it's just safer to totally prone out while you reload and here's one simple example of that from my stream stop charlie i missile away This next one is actually very difficult to see when you're watching someone else's gameplay and trying to analyze it. But as I've played this game more and more myself, I've actually realized that I haven't been doing this and it's been leading to a lot of deaths. And if you played a lot of Black Ops 4, you probably have this issue too. So here's the tip. If you are weak, or you get surprised by an enemy, they have more health than you, they're already aimed on you. Instead of running away to get cover and heal and reset the fight, commit to the fight. My first Call of Duty on PC was Black Ops 4, and in that game, the time to kill was very slow and everyone had a lot of health and you healed very quickly. So an effective strategy oftentimes, if you got surprised in Black Ops 4, was to simply run behind cover, heal, and reset the engagement. So now you both have full health. And I still very much have this habit because I played a ton of hours of Black Ops 4. But Modern Warfare is a very different game and you are almost never going to get away with that. In Modern Warfare, the time to kill is far too fast and because everyone is running a grenade of some kind unlike in black ops 4 the odds of you being surprised by someone successfully getting behind cover and healing without taking any explosive damage from that person or getting flanked and then re-engaging and actually winning the fight are very slim the odds are number one you're going to get finished before you even make it to the cover that you're looking for or two that you're going to get c4 or grenaded or shot in the back once you get behind that cover before you're able to re-engage like you had hoped to do. So the best thing you can do in modern warfare when you get surprised by someone who just starts shooting you is try your best and shoot them back. You might have a teammate there who can help you secure that kill quickly. You might not, but this is going to give you the best chance of survival when you're surprised by an enemy because the reality is once you start getting shot you're going to be dead really soon and the highest percentage chance you have of preventing that from happening is killing that person yourself now the odds are you're probably going to die anyway that's the reality of this game with how fast the time to kill is if you get surprised and you get shot first you're probably dead but if you want to maximize your chance of survival get out of the habit of trying to run to safety once you start getting shot and instead do your best to quickly aim to that guy and start shooting him you might be able to start causing flinch where the enemy's reticle starts bouncing around you might be able to make him panic because he's actually taking damage and he didn't necessarily expect to or you might land all your shots maybe even land a couple headshots and simply kill him faster than he was able to kill you. All of the options are bad and relatively low percentage. You're probably going to die, but your highest chance of survival is just to take the engagement and do your best to kill that guy. And this is another one of those skills where if you practice doing this over time, your snap quickness aim will get better and you will be more and more successful at making the best out of this bad situation and you'll surprise yourself with how many of these kills you're actually able to get and finally the last tip that you may not be doing this one is a little more general knowledge but i still think it's worth mentioning and making it really clear and obvious because this is one of the ways that good players are able to look so good because they use this strategy to always maximize the chance that they're not in a bad situation where they're not getting shot from 360 degrees around. And this is always run on the outskirts 
or the edges of the map rather than running down the center. This is good for a lot of reasons. Number one, the center or the middle of the map can usually be seen from the greatest amount of angles. So if you're running through the center, the directions from which you can get killed are a huge number. And number two, mid is where everyone is going to be looking to kill people because that's where everyone expects the enemy to be. So for those two reasons, you largely want to stay out of mid so that you're not in a situation where you're getting shot from some angle where you don't even know where the guy is or even worse you're getting shot from multiple angles at the same time if you instead choose to run on the outskirts the edges of the map or on the road less traveled then instead of reacting to someone else shooting you in the back or from some window while you're at mid you can be proactive and choose which engagements you want and you'll often see people before they see you when you're on these less populated routes in addition if you're on the very edge of the map one of your flanks is already covered if i'm on the rightmost side of the map i'm positive that i'm not going to get shot from my right because it's impossible possible for an enemy to be there. So I don't have to check as many spots for potential enemies when I'm advancing that way. In addition, if I do happen to get shot by someone and I don't know where they are, I at least know that I don't have to check over here because I know there's no one over there. So I have to check fewer spots so I have a greater chance of finding the enemy more quickly because I have less area to search through. When you take these outskirts, edge of the map routes, it is more likely that you see the enemy before they see you, and it is more likely that you do not get flanked or shot in the back or shot by someone camping. I hope you guys enjoyed these five tips for how to improve your gameplay in Modern Warfare. If you wanted to take these super seriously, I would advise you to use an entire play session trying to utilize tip number one for the entire play session. And then on your next play session, try to utilize tip number two for the entire play session. Really have that at the front of your mind and constantly do it. And eventually, if you do this long enough for each of these tips, you'll be able to internalize them so that you don't have to think about it anymore and all of a sudden your KD is skyrocketing. Once again, if you want to see more of me, interact with me, chat with me, say what's up, I stream Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, 7 p.m. Pacific time at twitch.tv slash Razanon. Go drop me a follow on Twitch right now so that the next time I go live, you're ready to hop into the channel and engage. I'm also spending a lot of time on this podcast with Tanner, ironing out little details, getting better at preparing for it, going over news. We've had two episodes and they've been a lot of fun. They've been really informative and chat interaction in those podcasts is super high. So again, make sure you're following the stream. The Drop Shop podcast is streamed live on my channel. We answer questions from chat all the time, especially during the podcast. So if you want to talk about the most recent patch 1.13, any upcoming news, if you've heard some rumors and you want to discuss them, make sure you're there for the next episode of the Drop Shot live. Thank you so much as always for watching Young Kings and remember, Stay humble. Oops. <laughs>